on YouTube. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape, or form a fully qualified mechanic, auto electrician, or auto HVAC technician. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right. Now, if like old mate, you own an older vehicle, we all know that over time, older vehicles develop weird and wacky quirks. Some of those quirks you just deal with. It's not serious. It's not causing any problems. You just deal with it. Some quirks will leave you scratching your head, wondering whether you should have a bit of a sticky beak at it, but decide not to. Others make you feel concerned and you think, well, I better go and get it checked out. But by the time you get it checked out, that quirk is just non-existent. Yesterday, I got an email from a viewer who's got a 1994 80 series with a low slug and powerhouse 1FZFE and the A442F four-speed electronic auto who's had a similar quirk pop up from time to time, much like I've had. Occasionally, they get a low idle in drive between 350 and about 400 RPM. and want to know, have I had this similar issue? And if I've had it fixed, what was the issue? Well, put it this way. It's one of those quirks that when I've gone to get the vehicle looked at, it's just not there. One of the best four-wheel drives ever made. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It's 80 series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech to kick off Monday's content. And I'll admit, I've had this problem as well. And uh, it's one of these quirks in a vehicle that you go, oh, this isn't right. I really need to go and get it checked out. But when you go and get it checked out, the quirk's not there and it's running fine. The kicker with mine is that when it does do this problem, I go and get the ECU read and there's nothing. I got this email yesterday and I'm still trying to work out how to pronounce this viewer's name. I think it's Gerard, but it also could be Gerard. It's G-E-R-A-R-D. So it's either Jared or Gerard. I apologise, fellow, if I've mispronounced your name, but most of my viewers know old mate can't talk English. I was brunged up proper. Um, hi, old mate's backyard tech. I have a 1994 80 series with a 1FZFE and the A442F four-speed electronic automatic. On random occasions, I'll pull up at the lights or I'll, or I'll start the vehicle and put it into drive and the drive idle speed will drop to 400 RPM, give or take. I know the standard idle is 650 plus or minus 50, but the 400 idle seems a bit weird. Have you had this problem in the past? And if so, has it righted itself or does yours continue to do it? If it does continue to do it and you got it fixed, what was the issue? From, as I said, it's either Gerard or Jared. Um, yes, I have had that problem. I still have that problem now. And it's one of those problems that, like I said, you think to yourself, well, I better go and get it checked out. But by the time you go and get it checked out, it's not there. The kicker with mine is there's nothing showing up in the uh, ECU log either. Um, mine does write itself. Um, I've spoken to a few people about it. Some of them think it could, could just be the TPS is... A bit fuzzed up um, it could be the mass is open didn't shut off properly from acceleration uh, others think it could be the TCU loading um, which I can't understand why that would be the case because the TCU loading would affect you, you, if your TCU is loading up and your trans isn't loading up then you've got a problem um, Yes, you're right. The idle for the 1FZFE with the A442F is 650 plus or minus 50. Um, I know with my engine, a cold starts anywhere from 14 to 1600 RPM. Um, and then you whack it into drive and it just, the revs just drop to 1000 immediately. So I'm not, I don't know what the problem is. When I have had the issue, I, you know, get it up to my now local mechanic up here because he'll read the ECU pretty cheap. There's nothing in it. And as I said, it could be the TPS, it could be the mass, it could be something screwy in the ECU, it could be the TCU's loading up and whatever. 
Um, I don't know. I've had this trouble. And what will happen is after a while of being at 400, all of a sudden it will come back up to, you know, 600 plus or minus 50. Oh, sorry, 650 plus or minus 50. So either 700 or 600 RPM. As we know with the tacos, they're in increments of 200 RPM, give or take. Um, and that's rounded values, may I, may I add. It's not exacting values, it's rounded values. Um, but if you look at the taco, it's in increments of two. So, you know, you've got 246, 1,000, uh, 246, 2,000, etc., etc., so on and so forth, ad infinitum. Um, so, Gerard or Gerard, however you pronounce your name, yes, I've had that issue before, but when I've gone to have it read on the ECU, it's not there. Could be the TPS, could be the mass. Um, I doubt it'd be the TCU loading up. Um, the only other thing it could be is the pump loading the engine. Um, I know what that 400 RPM feels like. It's not a nice feeling on that big motor. It's not a nice feeling. Because you, you're at it, you're looking at it, and you're thinking, this thing's going to damn well stall. Um, so it could be the pump is loading up the engine, um, and that's dragging it down. But as I said, over a course of like anywhere from 10 minutes to 15 minutes, it sort of writes itself. So one option you would have, maybe go get the auto serviced. Maybe go and get the auto serviced. Or if you can, if you're near a mechanic who's got an OBD1 system, oh, 1994, could be OBD2. Um, they didn't tell me if they've got that or the facelift because that went into 94 just before the facelift came out. So that's that's OBD1. Um, if it's a 94 facelift, I believe it'll be OBD2. But if it does happen and you're near a mechanic who's got an OBD2 engine reader, uh, go straight in. You know, see if you can go straight in with the with it running and see if they can read the ECU and find if there's any errors. Um, I'm OBD1 on that. Um, and so it's a little bit harder for me to find a, around my local area OBD1 compliant mechanics, but the, the one we go to for the other half's car is OBD1. The one down the road in the opposite direction doesn't know OBD1 if it fell over it. Um, so... Honestly, Gerard or Jared, if it happens and you're near a mechanic at the time it happens, go and get a go get your ECU read with the engine on. I might tell you, but you could get the auto serviced. Uh, that might fix the problem. I don't know. I, I've had this issue with my car on and off since I've owned it. Um, and as I said, the the 400 RPM, it's not a nice feeling on that big engine because you do you. It's 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 a it's a speed I found with that motor that it the whole car is sort of rattling a little bit, you know, more so than more so than usual. Um, but it it really doesn't like that low RPM speed. Um, that's the best advice I can give you, Jared. I'm sorry, or Gerard, however you pronounce your name. Um, I've had it, but when I've gone to get it fixed, it's, it's just not there. And sort of the worst thing about that is, is that it's not there and you're like, damn, I've wasted my time. And it's like, damn, I've had to go to the mechanic, waste their time, pay. You know, it, it unfortunately, it can be a vicious circle. Um, but my advice would be simply, you know, if necessary, clean the TPS, clean out the mass, um, maybe get the auto looked at. It could be the pump loading down the motor. Um, or as I said, if it happens and you're near a mechanic who's, if you have got a 94 and it's a facelift OBT2 compliant, go straight in there and say, listen, can you read my ECU now? I think I've got a problem. So there we go. That's the best advice I can give him. Stick around. We've got a couple of server PC stuff videos coming up for you shortly. Have a good one.